The relationship between Eyes Wide Shut and Jeffrey Epstein is a strange one indeed. From the perspective of a person in 2023, he may serve as a cipher to translate the film's mystery. And yet, this could not possibly have been intentional, could it? Could it? There is a Time Magazine article from 1999, shortly after Kubrick's death, explaining his increased aversion to speaking to the press in his later years. The article claims that telling this story was something he discussed with his wife, Christine, as far back as 1968. He wrote the screenplay himself, along with co-author Frederick Raphael. Cruz, Kidman, and Kubrick's widow Christine are all quoted, consistently granting openness for interpretation. Christine Kubrick said of the film, it has nothing to do with sex and everything to do with fear, acknowledging the film's persistent paranoia. The film seems to maintain fidelity. Fidelio to the source material, Tram Novel, also known as Rhapsody, or Dream Story. This reviewer has not read the story. Honestly, how many people can say they have? I will do so if I return to this film for another video. But does that itself make the point? Why did Kubrick elect to adapt a story serialized between 1925 and 1926 in issues of an obscure, upper-class German woman's interest magazine, Die Dame. Kubrick also directed the film Lolita, released in 1962. This film, based on a much better known 1955 novel, is about a man's obsession with an underage girl, and also has elements of black male, paranoia, murder, and exploitation, sharing some themes with Eyes Wide Shut, inviting more conspiracy theorization. As will be brought up shortly, the Epstein private jet, known to traffic suspiciously young ladies to Little St. James, was nicknamed by locals the Lolita Express. Paranoia, mere coincidence, conspiracy theories. As was written in Heller's Catch-22, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after you. If ever one were to discover what they are not meant to know, why wouldn't these words become convenient deflections by the guilty? And if you'll indulge me, please let me run through some history, mystery, and alleged coincidences surrounding the Epstein case that demonstrate how strange it truly is. Please know that this is barely skimming the surface, and a comprehensive exploration would take hours, and accuracy on this topic is monumentally difficult to guarantee. The source of Epstein's fortune is unclear. After growing up in Brooklyn, he was a well-connected mathematics and physics teacher in the affluent Upper East Side, despite never having earned his degree. He was eventually fired for poor performance. Before termination, Epstein did establish connections at the school with Bear Stearns CEO, Alan Greenberg, and was hired as a low-level trader, performing well and rocketing up within the company before being fired for SEC violation. He then started his own consulting company, finding lost money and doing business with all sorts of people, including Jamal Khashoggi's billionaire uncle and Iran Contra middleman, Admin Khashoggi. Strange connection to someone who was unceremoniously murdered, which was then subject to an attempted cover-up. During this time, he allegedly may have made claims about being an intelligence asset. Finding archive record of sources on this has been very difficult to verify. 
Later, he began consulting for Towers Financial Corporation, ultimately found to be a Ponzi scheme. Despite heavy involvement, he was never charged, and it is unknown what money he may have been able to take. From here, it was a series of hedge funds, shady deals, and purported blackmail using underage girls to gain leverage over societal elites. One way or another, he becomes known to be a billionaire. In 1998, in the midst of this rise, he bought an island, Little St. James. This is the place where the Lolita Express would fly young girls. Epstein also somehow acquired what is said to be the largest townhome mansion in New York City from Les Wexner, the owner of Victoria's Secret. But not the founder. That man killed himself. Reports on this sale vary, some indicating it was given to him completely free. Epstein was eventually arrested in 2006 after many dozens of reports too obscene to mention involving women from ages 14 to 16 and maybe even younger brought from around the world. And in 2008, he pled guilty to two counts of felony procurement of underage prostitutes. Allegedly, the serving Florida attorney Alexander Acosta was told to be lenient because Epstein belonged to intelligence. He was represented by, among others, Alan Dershowitz, one of the most famous lawyers in the country. For some reason, Steven Pinker helped with his defense. His plea led to a sweetheart deal where he would go on work release up to 12 hours a day. It also involved house arrest, where he was still allowed to leave to go shopping or go to the beach for exercise. After a multitude of civil cases, namely Virginia Guthrie, he was arrested again in 2019. The official list of Epstein's clients has not been released as of time of recording, though it may be at some point soon. Because we're not just ordinary people here. If I told you their names, I'm not going to tell you their names. But if I did, I don't think you'd sleep so well. Former ABC reporter Amy Robach said she had the story of the Epstein case years in advance of the story breaking was shut down by higher-ups in the network for a variety of questionable excuses. Epstein didn't kill himself. A refresher. July 6th, 2019. Epstein is jailed in Manhattan at the Metropolitan Correctional Center. This is in the heart of New York City. July 23rd, half past one in the morning, Epstein was found semi-conscious with injuries to his neck. Multiple murder and drug conspiracy suspect and former dirty cop Nicholas Tartaglioni was suspected that he denied harming Epstein and this was accepted as true. A prosecutor representing one of the victims believed this was attack and he thought that Epstein would likely die in prison. Epstein was put into suicide watch after this event, and then the security housing unit. The night of August 9th, 2019, his lawyers met with him, and he seemed upbeat. They've heard it described as relaxed and wildly confident in his release. That day, his cellmate was transferred and not replaced. Two guards who were meant to do a check that evening fell asleep at their desks, and later supposedly falsified records. Both cameras malfunctioned that night in front of his cell door, and another camera had unusable footage. At 6.30 a.m., he was found dead in his cell. This somehow leaked to 4chan by 8.16 a.m. Epstein's body was taken from its cell, and no photographs were taken of his body as found. Supposedly, he hanged himself with bedsheets. Recently, it's been discovered that the 911 tapes have also been deleted. Epstein's hyoid bone in his neck was broken, which is common in strangulation and much less indicative of hanging. 
There was also blood that correlates with the use of wire or cord in his neck that was somehow not on the bed sheet rope he used. The attending coroner nevertheless insisted that it was definitely, totally, a hanging. Look, I realize this was a severe tangent away from Eyes Wide Shut, but it shows the orchestration of something that beggars belief. Much like the story recounted by Ziegler, the story of Jeffrey Epstein is not just debatable. The official version of events relies on countless coincidences that in this YouTuber's opinion become impossible to swallow. Gullible is a dangerous accusation to make, so again I understand that a viewer may have a different opinion, but the official story seems so similar to the Alexander Solzhenitsyn quote. We know they are lying. They know they are lying. They know we know they are lying. We know they know we know they are lying. But they are still lying. I ask again, why did Stanley Kubrick choose this film? Is it so inconceivable that finding this story was subsequent to wanting to tell a story like it? One last odd observation regarding details buried within. Two extras can be seen at Ziegler's party and then are later seen while Christmas shopping at the end. Kubrick paid very close attention to detail. Why would he recycle those extras? What does that say?